Hello, it is Foundation Friday, July 6th, 2018. Steve Cypress here. Beautiful, spectacular summer day. Only hit about 112 here today, plus some uh, of our famous Phoenix area sandstorms in the morning. Not here, but in the south area of Phoenix. Anyway, today, if you're following along, is part four of my seven part series critical transitions that every business owner, entrepreneur must make. And Lisa's here, great seeing you, Lisa. Have to chuckle because Lisa recently uh, reached a lifelong goal and got a cartoon published in the New Yorker magazine where my cousin David has uh, been doing cartoons there for, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years or so. And she got in a great uh, cartoon that the New Yorker, anti-Trump or New Yorker actually put in her Trump cartoon, and we had a laugh about that. Ace is here, and so uh, let's get right to it. These are transitions that uh, many business owners stop way too early on this path. And uh, Lisa's, uh, they compared you to David. I love it. Very nice. So um, uh, I love the cartoon, and for those that uh, haven't seen it, just go do a search for Lisa Rothstein, New Yorker cartoon, and have a laugh at her uh, subtle way of... Uh, of getting in a pro-Trump message in a completely anti-Trump publication. Just pure brilliance along with being hilarious. So I hope they aren't watching this so that they don't realize that and they keep publishing your cartoons. Anyway, so uh, most business owners stop right here at being a generalist. They'll take any customer that comes in. Let's take a contractor, a uh, heating and air guy. Heating and air guy that says, hey, you know, Anyone in this in my area with a five mile radius or all that BS, you know, anyone that calls, we go running out there, uh, and they stop right there. Those are the lowest paid, and 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 uh, therefore uh, worst. It's like having a job. It's the worst rung on the ladder for a business owner slash entrepreneur, being a generalist, just taking anyone that comes along. Next, you want to so so if you're there, you want to make a transition. It's okay to be there, just you don't want to stay there. You want to make a transition to being a specialist. Now you want to say, I do only residential, or I do only commercial, or even better, I do only residential in high-end homes. And you stop taking the crappy little jobs with the people who complain and always tell you they have no money and can't pay, and you, you, you just don't even take those clients on. So you become a specialist in a certain area. And of course, this applies to all businesses. I'm just talking about the heating and air guy. He'll say, yeah, I only handle work from this area. It's got nothing to do with a five-mile radius around where his shop happens to be. I know plenty of contractors that they don't work at all in their area. Their warehouse, their their location of their business is in a, a low-income or you know relatively lower-income area or town to save money on expenses, but they don't do any work there. All their guys drive you know, 10, 20, 30 miles every single day to get to their, quote, territory to work in a high-end home. So we did the same thing back in my nine years of door-to-door -door sales. We had our locations in areas for recruiting purposes, recruiting quality people, good kids, good people to do the work. But we were selling stuff mostly in ghettos, and we would drive 45 minutes to an hour and a half every single day to go from beautiful suburban Newark, Delaware, for instance, to the pits of West Philadelphia or North Baltimore and avoid getting arrested, shot, etc., and sell our crap on the streets in the ghettos. But we weren't going to locate a location in the ghettos and therefore recruit all ghetto people to come work who would steal the stuff and, and do all, cause all kinds of problems and blah, blah, blah. So you want to become a specialist. Now, if you are a specialist, you're saying, hey, see that, Steve? I'm not a journalist, I'm a specialist. That's great, congratulations. Don't stop there. You wanna move on to becoming an expert. That's the next rum, rung up the ladder. And by the way, I've taught this for decades and I've helped, uh, I've taught the public this for decades, these seven critical transitions. I've helped my private clients uh, to actually make these happen. So if you want some help make that happen, let me know, otherwise, Get someone to help you or do it on your own, but get to become an expert. An expert where, for this heating and air guy, it might be some kind of master certification that you go for. It might be that you, you know, you have to be 10 years in the industry and pass some tests and do some stuff and you become an expert. Maybe a brand names you an expert. So you can put in your ads, we are a carrier, official, certified expert for carrier systems or train systems or whatever it is. You can get paid a little bit more now 
by becoming an expert. You command a little higher level of pay. Okay, but you don't want to stop there, do you? No, of course not. You want to make the next transition up from an expert to an authority figure. Authority figures get paid more than experts in every field, but I'm concentrating here on the heating and air guy just because that's the example I picked. So how does the heating and air guy become an authority figure? Same as you do in any other industry. You, you start teaching seminars. So you go to trade shows and you set up a booth and you say we're having a free training or you invite people into your location for a, a training. You write a book, you write an article for your local newspaper that comes out every month and you write an article on how to save money on your heating and air bill or blah, 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 whatever. And now you're an authority figure. You are teaching other people. You're going to command more money from a generalist than, or than being a generalist or a specialist or even an expert. You're an authority figure. But there is one rung higher, and in America, this is the highest level you can be. It's going from that authority figure, published author and all that, great. You're recognized as an expert, you're a specialist, you're an authority, but you want to become a celebrity. And I don't mean that you need to, you know, star in the next Marvel action movie or, uh, or, or go on American Idol and, and win and get 100 million votes or whatever they do. I'm talking about a celebrity in your area. So this heating and air guy would become a celebrity in your town or in the town where you do business. If you want to use that example of the heating and air guy that sets up his warehouse to house his trucks and his equipment in a certain town but does all the work 30 miles away in a high-end uh, town near, nearby that's 20 miles away, uh, you want to become a celebrity in that town. Now that means, and, and believe me, it's fun, when you start walking around, if you went into you know, uh, you were eating lunch in a restaurant in that town, people would come up to you and go, hey, you're that guy, can I get a picture with you? Can I get an autograph? That's where you've become a celebrity in your area. And how do you do that? Well, you do it by, you have your book, you have your seminars, but now you will speak. So maybe you speak at the, the local chamber of commerce, you speak at the local high school, uh, to all the teachers, you speak to, um, you, you do a webinar, you do an online presentation, and you put it into a Facebook group with all the homeowners and the housewives in your area that are in that Facebook group, uh, you know, residents of whatever. You start doing videos, and now you walk around. I mean, it happens to me. I'll go to events, and people, this is a celebrity is someone, I, I look at it as you're a celebrity where people, uh, you, you are known by other people that you don't know them. That's being a celebrity, right? So they come up and they're like, you're Steve Cypress, right? And I'm like, yes, have we met? No, we never met, but I've always wanted to meet you. And can you please sign my book? And can I take a picture with you? And can I tag you on Facebook and, and say that, hey, look at this, I got to meet Steve Cypress. That's when you know, now by the way, again, this does not happen when I just walk through an airport or I'm walking through a town in America. This happens, I said, at an event, meaning a marketing event where people are direct response marketing consultants, or direct response marketing people at an event where I, for whatever reasons, well, I just told you some of the reasons, but I'm seen as a celebrity. Uh, you want to make yourself known. You want to put yourself out there. Social media is a great way to do it. Uh, getting a cartoon published in the New Yorker magazine. So for Lisa Rothstein, that could have brought you from being a uh, authority figure or an expert to being somewhat of a celebrity. People hear your name now and they go, Lisa Rothstein, is that, are you the Lisa Rothstein that made that cartoon that I was laughing at in the New Yorker? Wow, that's when you made it to celebrity. Celebrities are the, that's the most coveted position. Those are the highest paid. Those people, when you become a celebrity, you're gonna get paid for who you are as opposed to for what you do. That's huge. You know, take, uh, you know, let's go away from the heating and air guy and take an athlete like a Tiger Woods who no longer doesn't really get paid for what he does, gets paid for who he is. Even LeBron James, who just signed like a $150 million contract, that's, that's to quote uh, a fantastic politician, really popular one, that's crumbs to him. He makes his real money from all his endorsements, from being a celebrity, from people saying, can I have your autograph? Can I get a photo with you? Can I please wear shoes with your name on it? You know, Tiger Woods gets an appearance fee to show up at a tournament. Doesn't matter if he shoots as bad as me, which is impossible, but let's just say he shoots really bad for him. Doesn't matter. He doesn't live off the prize money like 
players do when they're scrambling just to barely make the tour and they're hoping to make enough money to pay for them to get to the next stop on the tour. You know, they got to pay for a caddy and the, the training and their equipment and they got to rent a place and get the, the, the hotel room or buy, get rent the house out or whatever. They can have expenses and they're just hoping to make enough money, but they got to make it all on prize money, basically. They're nobody. But when you become a somebody and become a celebrity, you start to get paid for who you are. So now for the heating and air guy to become a celebrity in the town, faces all over billboards, he's given presentations all over the place, he's seen on local TV all the time, he's writing articles all over the place. Uh, now it's like, wow, can I? Can you please come and work at my house? Well, you know, we're all booked up. Well, man, I, I, I'd love to say, hey, that guy on TV, I actually had that guy. Mr. Air Conditioning Guy, show up at my house. You can charge more money for that. You're gonna make more money now being that celebrity. If you don't believe me with any of these transitions, prove me wrong. Go ahead and do them and tell me that when you move from generalist to specialist, you don't make more money. When you move from specialist to being an expert, from an expert to authority figure, and when you make that move from authority figure to a celebrity, tell me that doesn't change everything and you don't start making more money working less, having less stress, enjoying life more, and that's what it's all about. So I highly recommend you make this number four of seven critical transitions in your business and your life. And a whole bunch of other people is here. Gloria's here, great senior. Ace says, I'm available for appearances, especially if there's guns there. Yes, and Ace has been on national TV, radio. You know, he's posting on social media photos with other celebrities and this and that. And, you know, I, I, I haven't been with you, but Ace is an expert and an authority figure in the gun world. And I would assume that when you show up at gun shows, people say, hey, there's the guy who wrote the book. There's Ace. There's the guy who's the head of whatever, and they want a photo with you. And they people that you don't know, know you. You're a celebrity there. Now, are you a celebrity just walking down the street here in Arizona? Not likely. But you're a celebrity in your niche, and that's the way to do it. And Lisa says, oh, Lisa put a link to the cartoon. That's awesome. Thank you. And Lisa says, this has been a struggle for me. I've never known how to say no. I finally stopped taking certain clients, and it's much better. Got to have the red velvet rope. Right. So I apologize. I didn't read that uh, when it came up, but whatever it is where you're struggling in making these transitions, we work through it. The winners work through it. And the ones that don't want to win as badly don't work through it and stay where they are and say, yes, yeah, Steve, that all sounded good, but I'm very happy being an expert and I make okay money, I have an okay life, and I'm okay. And that's fine. That's where you want to stay. But you want to get to the top. It is critical that you make these transitions, and so I hope you do that. That's it for Foundation Friday. Thanks for all those comments and likes and everybody here live and everybody watching on the replay. I don't see any other comments, concerns, questions, issues, um, uh, people laughing at my ugly red Hawaiian shirt, or anything else. So we'll end it here, and I'll be back tomorrow with Success Story Saturday. We always share a story about a successful entrepreneur to pump you up and keep you going through the tough times, because all us entrepreneurs know life is a roller coaster. And it's ups and downs, and so hearing success stories about other entrepreneurs that made it through their tough times can help us go through our tough times. And if you're fighting to go through these critical transitions, yeah, you're going to have tough times. And that's the number one reason that people don't do it. They say, I'm very happy where I am. I don't want to fight to get to the next level. Not a problem. Getting to the top is not for everybody. Absolutely is not, or else it wouldn't be a top. There's always a top. There's always a bottom. There's always people in the middle. Wherever you want to be, that's fine. But I hope you'll join me tomorrow right here on Success Story Saturday. Thanks for being here today. Over and out. Bye-bye.